day 21 of picking random products from Amazon and modeling them in Blender from scratch. This time we're going to make this coffee machine right here. And if you want to learn more about the tools and techniques that you see me use in this video, then check out my Blender ebook, the link is below. First of all, we're going to need a couple of reference images. Go to Google and search for Pure Ref. Click on this download button and download this little program in a couple of clicks. Now on Amazon, we got a couple of product pictures right here. And we're just going to drag and drop those into Pure Ref. And now when we go to Blender, we can keep this shit on our screen at all times. I usually throw this on my second monitor. But if you live in a third world country, or maybe you just don't want a second monitor, then you can just put Pure Ref over here in this little corner over the outliner. Nobody ever uses this thing anyway, so you're going to be fine putting your references is on top of that. We're going to start by modeling this platform at the bottom here. To do that, get rid of the default cube. Shift A, give me a circle and set the number of vertices to 64. Now extrude this up a little bit, then extrude it again and scale it down. And with control R, we're going to add a bunch of loop cuts like this to turn everything into little squares. This is where we're going to start adding these holes for the buttons. But to do this right, we have to consider the polygon density here. So one button would take up an area approximately this large. If we inset this with I and we cut a hole here, we can check this statistics box right here in the viewport overlays and then we can see how many edges we got selected we can see that we got 20 edges around this hole so when we cut a circular hole we want a circle with approximately that many vertices it doesn't have to be exactly the same but we can't have 128 vertices on the hole so i'll place a 3d cursor around here somewhere with shift a i'll add a new cylinder let's do 18 vertices scale this down and now give me this magnet shit set that to face project and make sure to check these two boxes down here now when you move this with g it's going to align with the surface below we're going to move that to the side here now select this shape add a boolean modifier set that to difference and target the cylinder in wireframe you can now see the resulting hole that you're going to get from this i'm going to place it around here somewhere now apply the boolean modifier get rid of this let's delete the hole at the bottom and we gotta clean up this geometry a little bit to do that just take the vertices from the surrounding geometry which are on the edges of the circle make sure you don't take the vertices of the circle and then slide those vertices with double g until they meet the vertices of the circle this way you're going to get rid of your extra geometry and you're going to be able to clean this up a little bit i learned this shit from thomas colin he does this better than me go watch his tutorials if you want to get good at topology there are going to be some parts where we can't make a quad instead you can just add a triangle and you can do that by selecting two vertices and joining them with j once you got this more or less cleaned up press f to fill extrude it inwards we're going to try to make this flat by pressing s to scale and then clicking without moving the mouse set the orientation to normal and set the z value value here to zero now this is going to become flat then i want a loop cut here select this face on the inside control plus scale that down and now we got this hole for the button here i'm also going to add a loop cut over here alt s to push it inwards a little bit bevel this edge loop with control b also select these two and bevel them and now when we add a subdivision surface modifier to this we can go object shade smooth and it's going to look much nicer let's also bevel this edge down here and we gotta copy this button over to the other side so let's delete one half and let's try to do this with a mirror modifier modifier on the y-axis place the mirror modifier above the subdivision surface modifier because that way the mesh gets mirrored first and then it gets subdivided if we subdivide it first these edges here are going to be rounded and then they're going to be mirrored which means they're not going to be connected here so mirror first works better in this case and now this middle button over here we're going to make without using a boolean modifier we're manually going to create this shape and cut it in there here's how you do that i want to use these faces right here but i want this to be a little bit wider so i'll slide this up a little bit and slide this part down then inset this part with i uncheck boundary so we don't get an edge over here and i want these edges to turn into a semicircle when we turn this into button so here we got seven edges which means if this was a full circle it would be 14 edges so i'll place my cursor over here shift a give me a circle with 14 vertices fill that scale it down and with this magnet thing set the face project we're going to move that so it aligns with the surface below place it right here and scale it down and we're going to try to rotate it so that the seven edges on one half here would align with this geometry over here so in this case i want this vertex to connect here and this one down here once this is approximately in place i'll disable my magnet give me a shrink wrap modifier set that to project and target the surface below now we're going to move this double z to move it on the local z axis and we're going to project that onto the surface below apply the shrink wrap join this into the mesh below delete this surface and also delete one half of the circle we can also get rid of this give me these seven edges and these over here w bridge edge loops and that's perfectly connected now to fill this properly at the right angle we're going to place the 3d cursor over here set the pivot point to 
3D cursor, extrude this out to somewhere around here, then fill this, go to top view, K for knife tool over here, click right there, Y for only Y axis, and then we're going to make a cut right here, which is perfectly straight. We can get rid of this vertex, and we're going to do the same shit down here. So knife cut, Y axis, bring it over here, enter, delete this vertex, and maybe this will look a bit nicer if we slide it down a little bit. But now we got a perfect hole right there. If we subdivide it, it looks even better. We don't even have to do no topology cleanup. This is why I don't like Boolean. You always gotta clean up with Boolean. It's always a pain in the ass to work with. This shit usually works out way better for me, but if you got a more complex shape, you might have some trouble with this technique. Let's apply the mirror modifier. Fill this, inset with I, Alt S to push it inwards, E to extrude, loop tools flatten. We're gonna duplicate this surface and scale it up, then delete the face at the bottom of this hole and bevel these edges here. We're also gonna need this button, so give me these edges right here. P to separate them to new object, fill, shift seven to align my view with this surface, place the cursor over here, 3D cursor, pivot point, shift D, right click, rotate by 180 degrees, merge vertices by distance. Now we got a circle which we can extrude up, delete the face at the bottom, inset, Alt S, bevel this, and now we got this little button for switching between fuck knows what. It's asking you if you want half a coffee or full coffee. Who the hell drinks half a coffee anyway? We also need a button over here. We're gonna create that from this bottom face. Extrude, inset, Alt S, bevel this. I'm gonna extrude this inwards, and then we can just duplicate this over to the other side. Next, we have to make this surface up here with the holes so that when you spill your coffee, the coffee goes into these holes. And since you're probably not gonna clean it up for two weeks, it's gonna grow mushrooms and mold. Here's why Aryan is the best Blender YouTuber. With Shift-D, I'm going to duplicate this circle and scale it down a little bit. Separate that to new object. Extrude right-click, scale down, and we're going to bring this all the way inwards. Give me four loop cuts on the inside of this circle, and we're going to bevel each of those loop cuts to turn them into two or three new loop cuts. Then I'm going to use the faces which I just created to make the hole. For example, I can take this little surface, inset with I, loop tool circle, and that's going to be one of these little circles out here. Then over here, I gotta make two slightly larger circles, so I'll inset again, loop tool circle, with individual individual origins I can scale these down to adjust their size and I'm also gonna adjust the rotation so we don't get any busted up twisted faces like this then over here I want another circle loop tool circle that's gonna be a little bit bigger than this one and on the inside I'm going to make two more these are going to be a little bit bigger than the last one we're going to select 16 edges like this because that's going to be one quarter of the 64 vertex circle and around this area we're going to select two edge loops like this Control E mark seam and that's going to be one quarter which we're just going to duplicate and place it into a circle but based on this we kind of fucked up because we need some more circles and it's going to be impossible to make them all perfectly tiled but it doesn't matter i'm gonna delete these two surfaces copy this and place it into this hole give me the same thing on the other side i'm also gonna copy this hole and bring it over here and once we got a couple of circles we're gonna extrude them all scale them down on individual origins lower them down extrude them inwards and delete the bottom now select all the sharp edge loops Control b to bevel them place the 3d cursor in the middle with l select this surface Control i to invert the selection delete all the other faces now select this again alt e spin use duplicates i want four merge by distance and now we got a bunch of holes now the lower part of the coffee machine is ready let's move on to the body Here's what I'm going to do about the body of this coffee machine. Give me a cylinder with 64 vertices. That has to be a lot more narrow than this platform in the front. It has to be approximately like this. We're going to bring it up to around here somewhere. And now with Control R, we're going to add a bunch of loop cuts until all these faces here are turned into squares. Now we can get rid of the top and the bottom. I'm going to select just less than one half of the cylinder. Then I'll deselect a couple of edge loops from the top and a couple more from the bottom. Then P to separate them to new object. This is going to be this glass cover in the back it's probably plastic but glass sounds better now place that 3d cursor in the middle here select this edge loop extrude right click s shift z to exclude the z axis from the scaling and we're going to bring that inwards like this now we can try face grid fill and we have to fuck around with these numbers until something works in this case span 32 and offset 31 works for me but for you it's probably going to be something different just to keep my topology clean, I'm going to add a couple loop cuts over here. I'm going to mark a seam around here so I can very easily select this inner part. Shift D, right click P to separate it to new object. And we're going to join that with this front surface. Merge vertices by distance. And now we have this container in the front and also a filling on the inside. Let's separate this. Give me this surface below and also separate that. We're going to use that to create some more details on this lower part. We're going to inset a surface here. Select the corners. Loop tools. Relax. Then take that surface and extrude it out. Maybe we can add some more random 
random shapes. I don't know what's supposed to be inside here because I don't have this thing sitting in front of me. But I would imagine there's probably something like this to suck the water. If you want to be cool, you can add some holes or some other random details here. We're also going to make a couple of holes over here. Bevel this. And now join this back into this part. We're probably going to have to select this frame. Extrude, right click, Alt S. Check even offset because that's going to look a little bit better once we add some materials. And once we make this behave like glass. Bring this back. Give me a circle over here. And now let's select a couple of vertices over here in the front. Expand the selection with Control Plus. Extrude this inwards and delete the surface at the top. Give me these faces with Shifty. We're going to duplicate them and separate them to a new object. It's probably better if we dissolve these edges. Extrude this out. Subdivision surface. Loop cut over here. And with Alt S, we're going to deflate this. Now apply the subdivision surface modifier. Inset this with no boundary. Alt S to deflate it. Select this inner area and deselect all these vertical edge loops. Loop tool space. Loop tools relax. Five iterations. Get this out of the way so that we can make a knife cut from over here to back here. Give this a little bit of thickness. Now we can bridge these edge loops. Give me a couple of loop cuts down here. Also bridge these. Fill this. Fill this. I want two more loop cuts so I can take this part. Inset loop tool circle and extrude this down. This is going to be the part where the coffee is going to drip out of. Bevel this and I don't have a fucking microscope to see what this thing looks like up close but I would imagine there's some kind of holes in this like this. Extrude that inwards and then later when we subdivide this it's going to look a little bit better. Now this shape is more or less complete. Select all the sharp edges, add some bevels, object shade smooth and mirror this over to the other side. Now we just need this little bullshit up here. So give me a plane, push it outwards like this, subdivide a couple of times, select an area right here in the front, inset, take all this geometry in the back here loop tools relax give me linear get this out of the way now we can extrude this down get rid of this add some thickness to the surrounding geometry give me face grid fill here it's probably not even possible to grid fill this properly because the geometry is not aligned so instead we're going to take the faces from the top scale them to zero while the 3d cursor is over here merge by distance correct normals and now we got a filling for the bottom select this proportional editing set the sphere pull that outwards like this now select all the sharp edges and give me some more bevels so that when we subdivide this it's gonna look cute we're gonna play Place that somewhere in here and lastly we just need to make this cover so give me the circle from the bottom and bring it up here extrude that up inset face grid fill lift all this stuff up so we can select this edge loop and with sharp proportional editing if we pull this down it's going to give us a dome at the top now we just gotta make this thing which you pop open if you want to place a new plastic pot of coffee if you're like me you do this shit six times per day so i'm going to start a knife cut right here give me x axis and bring that up to back here somewhere slide whatever vertices you gotta slide to connect them with this cut copy this to the other side and now we can select this entire surface p separate give me my 3d cursor right here so i can scale this up on the x-axis and then we just got to figure out a way to fill in these sides extrude this down fill this fill this then we're going to start adding some subdivision surface modifiers which means we also got to add a couple of bevels and once we got all the bevels and subdivision surface modifiers and whatever out of the way now we gotta bend this thing so here's how you bend this give me a circle 128 flip it sideways and scale it way up we're going to bring that over here and the curve of this circle is going to be the curve of the machine. So it's going to be something sort of like this, right? It's up to you if you want to make this curvier or whatever. Then we're going to delete all this other geometry. Give me some subdivision surface, apply that. Object, convert to curve. Select all this and join it into the body here. We can even take this stuff and join it in as well. Then add a curve modifier, target this curve. It looks like Y works as a deform axis, but we're going to have to rotate this in some weird way. Rotate around the Z axis, move it on the Y axis. And this is why a curve modifier is a pain in the ass. Nobody in the world understands how it really works. It randomly snaps all over the place and it's completely unpredictable sometimes. Maybe I'm just stupid. So maybe it's about time you educate me on something. Anyway, apply that shit, bring it back in. And now we finish this model at the cost of my sanity. Let's go make a couple of textures. This coffee machine has the simplest textures known to man. We just need a black surface with a couple of simple icons like these cups right here and maybe a company logo or product name or some other bullshit. So you better believe we're going into paint net. Give me 496 by 496. I want a dark gray background. Then give me my line tool. Give me white. I'm gonna make a line like this. Reshape that into one half of a little cup. Then mirror this to the other side and also give me a little handle like this. That's gonna be this button. Then copy this and bring it over to this side or we're gonna have the other button but the other button is gonna have two cups so copy this and paste it onto a new layer and on the second cup we're going to use our eraser to cut this shit off then copy this cup again and bring it over here we need two more cups one is supposed to be halfway full like this and the other is supposed to be all the way full 
next give me my text tool font ariel and i'm not gonna be a scumbag and take the company name my company is going to be called dis bio 91 i don't feel like finding a cursive font maybe i just won't even put any text up here i don't give a shit it's good enough that's all we need now we can just save this i'm gonna go to the shading workspace new material drag and drop this texture into this material color into base color i'm going to duplicate all of this so that i can apply my subdivision surface modifiers in case i fucked something up and now i can come up here select this little surface give me u unwrap and my uv editor down here i'm going to adjust my uv map right now i'm controlling only this little surface and i'm going to place that over these coffee cups so i have some coffee cups over here i'm gonna apply the same material to these buttons now unwrap this place that over this single cup right here then unwrap the other side and place that over the double cup we can apply the same material to all the other parts if you want to prevent having text on any part just select that geometry scale it down in the uv map and just place it over some dark area where there's no text then finally we're going to apply the subdivision up here select this surface and unwrap that place that over my little logo and now i just want some glass for this part in the back where you keep the water so give me a new material assign that there we're going to name that plastic crank up transmission reduce the roughness reduce the alpha now make sure you're an ev go to material properties and scroll down in the settings in the material properties tab set the blend mode to alpha hashed you can also try alpha blend i don't even know what the difference is i don't know if we have to do the same thing for the shadows it doesn't seem to make any difference now this is transparent and in render view that looks pretty cute you can control how transparent this is by adjusting the alpha value you can also control the roughness increasing the metallic value value also makes this look a little bit better but if you push it all the way up it's not transparent anymore now we got a coffee machine that i'm going to animate the same way i always do i'm not gonna show you that because i'm sick as a dog i don't feel like filming this video anymore but even though i'm sick as fuck i'm still pumping videos every day so check out the fucking ebook i'm definitely gonna get banned from youtube so follow me on my other social media platforms you guys seem to really enjoy when i bully you in these videos so if you want to get bullied by me go follow me on rumble i'm gonna make a bunch of videos on that platform about a bunch of different topics which i can't talk about on youtube because i'm gonna get banned but i'm gonna get banned anyway so join my discord like the damn video let me know what you want to see next and i'll see you in the next one